Hey guys, thank you for tuning in today. My name is Henzi Tanrin Sawyer and I'm speaking to you from my counseling room. I just finished my last session and I thought, you know what, it's been a while since I released a video on this channel and I thought, you know what, I am going to give you guys information on a topic that is dear to my heart, which is erectile dysfunction. Erectile dysfunction is a sexual dysfunction that happens in men. Last year, I think somewhere during March time, I think it was early in the year, probably um, January, I remember, um, when I went to Portugal, I was saying I was going to release a, a video on erectile dysfunction, but I, was, I wasn't able to do so. But then I went on a short course on psychosexual therapy. I was able to gather some information, both personal information on and on my research. And I thought I have enough information, you know, according to my knowledge that I want to put out there because I do see couples. I do see um, individuals who suffer from erectile dysfunction and because of the shame around it, people are not able to talk about it. Um, well, this is something that destroys relationships. So I just want to encourage couples. I want to encourage people to be able to talk about this, especially in their relationship, because when you talk about this in your relationship, it allows you yourself and your partner to enjoy your relationship better, even without the sexual closeness that you might you might um once have that's now gone and you might be you might be i'm talking to you who, who you might be in a sex sexless relationship or in a sexless marriage this um uh, uh topic is is for you okay i'm just gonna go through my notes um and see if it's something you know it's not what like i normally say not one size fits all just go listen to the video rewind it you know come back to it think about what i've said in the video this is my own from my own perspective and from the research i've done and my own personal experiences also and if you think that you know something in there that i'm saying resonates with you you know, see how you can work with it also. Okay. So introduction, a healthy sex life plays 15 to 20% of reinforcing feelings of desire and desirability. A healthy sex life is very important. When you're in a relationship or in, in a sexual relationship, you know, you want to be able to function. Um, so, in your relationship and if you're married you know I'm, I'm speaking to married couples now um, I mean if you're not married and you choose to involve in a sexual relationship that's up to you but you know in a sexual relationship um, 15 percent to 20 percent by research says that it does help to reinforce that a healthy sex life okay sex plays an integral role in a person's life or relationship i mean we all came into this world through sex there if somebody says oh you know you know sex is dirty i don't know why people think about sex in a dirty way it's not dirty there's nothing dirty about sex i mean your mother and your father had sex and that's why you are here so um sex plays an integral role in our lives and in, in also our relationships relationship works better when both partners value desire pleasure eroticism and satisfaction so if you are in a relationship a romantic relationship with someone who is your partner desiring each other having pleasure and eroticism and satisfaction is very important in your relationship it helps cement the relationship i mean there's something special that happens when a man and a woman in the right way come together in the right way don't forget i'm speaking about consensual relationship i'm not speaking about a relationship where you know you force yourself on somebody that's something else that's not what i'm talking about however for men if the penis is unable to bring blood in or keep the blood trapped the penis will experience dysfunction so as a man 
if your if your heart is not able to transfer blood into your penis you're not gonna get an erection you know or sustain an erection so the penis is linked to the heart and when aroused the heart delivers blood to the penis yeah so when there is difficulty getting and keeping an erection long enough for for sex which affects over half half men um between 40 to 70 years old it can feel frustrating it can feel frustrating embarrassing and create avoidance of sexual touching and loss of confidence with intercourse and orgasm for men experiencing this condition in their sexual relationship so if you're in a relationship and maybe you want to have sex with your spouse and you don't you you, you know and nothing's happening down there of course you will feel embarrassed you know you'll feel embarrassed you'll feel frustrated that you know your 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 spouse has been working on you and nothing is happening down there no sensation or sometimes you feel the sensation but there is no erection happening the longer the issues are left unaddressed the harder it becomes you know in, and it, it results into anxiety performance you know there's some men who feel well you know they begin they begin to avoid and as a result they begin the blame game so rather than you trying to pinpoint whose fault it is that you can't have a have an erection talk about it with your spouse you know and i know there are different things that causes you not to have an erection but it's very good that you communicate how what's going on for you also is about talking with with your spouse what she feels or asking her how she feels about the erectile dysfunction because it's both of you that are going through this not just yourself so don't think about it and feel oh yeah you're the only one who's going through this your spouse is going through that too um so there are different types of erectile dysfunction you have lifelong um erectile dysfunction um, this is when a man has never had an erection that has resulted in vag vaginal penetration. So maybe the, the, there is no life at all, you know, and it could be, you know, different things that has caused them, the, the person not to have um, any kind of uh, penetration because, you know, well, vaginal penetration because maybe it's had an accident or something has happened or there's just some kind of issues that has happened and he's never been able to have an erection to pe penetrate into um, a vagina. There is also acquired erectile dysfunction and this is when penetration was acquired at some stage but later unable to do so acquired penetration you're able to get penetration you're able to make penetration but somewhere some some somewhere down the line is stopped you know you're not able to have penetration anymore your penis is always limp and you're not able to have um that that um, penetration there is also situational erectile dysfunction so situational erectile dysfunction is the ability to achieve penetration in one situation but not another so for example um, if you are someone from the lgbt community as a man you are attracted to a man and you're able to have an arousal there but you're not able to um, have an arousal or you know when you when you come near near a woman so that's situational I mean, because it's something that you've decided that is your preference. Um, another type of erectile dysfunction is middle age. Fear of not being able to achieve an um, erection at this stage of life. I mean, once you pass middle age, you start to um, experience less function but there's some men who function even as mid even over middle age even 70 year old there are some men who function and i will talk about the various medication um that's out there i will talk about the various medical conditions and stuff you know that can cause um erectile dysfunction um i'm sure this message will run into a part two so look out for the part two now some medical um, conditions and medicine can contribute or worsen erectile dysfunction some of which include diabetes 
high blood pressure, high cholesterol, high blood pressures, those kind of things can cause you to have erectile dysfunction. But my advice, um, well, I won't say advice, I'm not supposed to be giving you advice because I'm not a doctor, but my suggestion would be see your GP, you know, for them to to examine you and find out what's going on for you if you are experiencing erectile dysfunction. Okay, some causes of erectile dysfunction. You have the physical factors that causes erectile dysfunction. And I'll just make a list of a few of them. You have low testosterone, block arteries, excess alcohol, obesity, um, diabetes, physical, um, no, no physical attraction, low sex drive, um, false expectation, loss of desire or interest, damage to nerves, brain or um you might you might have damage to your brain or damage to your penis from an accident or surgery illicit drugs if you're taking drugs you know um illicit drugs heart disease or prostate diseases those things can cause you to have erectile dysfunction if you didn't catch the list you can always re rewind the video or pause it and go back um, another causes of um, erectile dysfunction is psychological factors. Psychological factors include hormonal imbalances, um, anxiety, depression, stress, fatigue, side effects of medication. Some side effects from medication can cause erectile dysfunction. So you want to look out for that if you are taking some type of medication read through the manual and see whether um or read through the leaflet and see whether you know anyone any one of the side effects is something that you are experiencing in terms of how your sexual organ is functioning okay or not functioning right the reason why some men with erectile dysfunction may may form a pattern or rush to ejaculate during sexual intercourse is due to being anxious is due to being anxious yeah is due to being anxious i'm re repeating that because we know how men like to rush <laughs> so you know it's due to being anxious and obtaining or maintaining an erection which can be difficult to change when you're anxious and you're just rushing because you want to make penetration, your, your, your penis will not even think about, okay, let me stay for longer because you want to quickly go in there. It's not running anywhere, so you need to wait. Most men with sex anxiety also have problems of initiating sex or talking about problems with their partner because they are constantly thinking of thinking ahead if they can perform to meet expectations well i don't know what you guys can can say about that if you are in a marriage in a relationship where there is um sexual dysfunction but i know that when a man is thinking oh i'm thinking how am i gonna please this person you know you're you're overthinking it stop overthinking whether your penis is gonna work or not because once you're overthinking it whether you're gonna be able to have an erection it take it, it doesn't make you focus on what you're supposed to be doing which is arousing your spouse it doesn't make you focus on exploration of your spouse's body it, because you're thinking about yourself you're thinking about okay how am i how am i gonna perform am i gonna perform you know you're focusing you're overthinking it relax yeah performance myth and demands can also make eroticism um, become destructive because of its misuse misunderstanding of the role of erotic fantasies and materials don't be going to watch pornography and see those people who are paid to display whatever they want to display. And then you bring that into your relationship and you say, oh, I want to be kinky. And I want I want my husband or my wife to dangle from the chandeliers. And you think, oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's reality. That's not reality. If you are expecting your, your man to last um as long as other people are lasting when you see them you know on the whatever you're watching you are giving yourself unrealistic expectations 
yeah you're giving yourself unrealistic expectations and if you are a man and you're looking at stuff and you're thinking well that guy is like you know he 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 can he can come three four times why why is it i can't come three four times well you're giving yourself unrealistic expectations think about what is it you can do for yourself yeah and when you're experiencing all the stuff don't keep it to yourself speak to your partner right here are the things that I feel that you can do when you're suffering from erectile dysfunction. You need to talk to your partner. Talk to your partner if you're overweight, lose weight, exercise, stop smoking. Yeah. Or reduce the amount of, of uh, smoking you do. Um, have a balanced diet. They say if you limit red meat and alcohol consumption, it does help also do with your heart have a good heart take care of your heart reduce stress and anxiety go to the chemist you know Cialis is there now Viagra people can buy it over the counter talk to your chemist talk to your pharmacist talk to your GP about your um, erectile dysfunction explore healthy ways that you be able to please your partner yeah Explore healthy ways. Don't say because your penis is not working, then you will deny your wife of sex. There are other ways that you can practice sex. There are other ways. It's not always about penetration. What about pleasing your wife in different ways? You know, what about looking for how you can stimulate your wife without you thinking about yourself alone? You know, because I, I tell you, you know, one of the things I've experienced in, all, in my own relationship is that, you know, when there is uh, erectile dysfunction, the man thinks about himself alone. Oh, um, my penis is not working today. So because my penis is not working today, I don't need to give you sex. I don't need to be, I don't need to initiate. I don't need to make sexual contact because I don't want you to feel disappointed. I'm disappointed anyway. Yeah, I'm disappointed anyway because you can't fulfill my needs. But I want you to be able to look for ways where you can please me. Look for ways, you know, explore explore my body in a way where I can feel satisfied sexually because that helps to bring us together as husband and wife. It helps us to bring us as partners, as a spouse. It brings the relationship. So if you are experiencing that in your relationship, I'm encouraging you, both of you, be able to talk about it. Don't shy away from it like many men do and they buried it, buried under the carpet. Now, it's very frustrating for both the man and the woman. It's very frustrating and I'll talk about that in a minute. Now, emotional responses and its impact. So when a man feels that he's suffering from erectile dysfunction, some men know, some men don't know. But when you know the when it becomes um evident that well this is uh something going on my penis is not working the way it needs to denial kicks in you know denial it can cause depression and then they pass blame and avoid because of shame there's no point denying i mean the penis is not working what is it you're denying you know there's no point denying you just need to acknowledge that okay I'm having problem sustaining an erection. I'm having problem keeping an erection. Call your wife, call your spouse, your partner. Speak to them and talk to them about it. If you keep everything yourself or, or deny or say to your partner, well, it's because we always have disagreements. That's why I'm not physically attracted to you anymore. It's because we, we um, you know, because of one thing or the other, or you make excuse or avoid it and say, well, I'm stressed, I'm tired. I'm not saying those things don't contribute, but it's about communicating, communicating with your spouse so they know what's going on. If not, anxiety, frustration fits will come. And the man will begin to feel the masculinity, you know, because he will feel that he will not feel the masculinity of having a functioning penis. And trust me, the woman will also feel that you are not a man because you are not fulfilling her needs. So to be able to avoid that, it is very important that you speak to your spouse about it. 
for those who do not have any children or still want children they can be thinking oh gosh do i am i gonna have kids do i have the you know would i ever have kids you know and that's what happens in life now for women it could be emotional responses and impact and you can experience self-blame where the woman begin to think about what have i done is it me is the man cheating you know and then anger you know a you know rejection and abandonment I'm okay no because you can you can talk to someone else who's going through the same thing a lot of women go through this and they don't know who they can talk to a lot of men go through this and they don't know who they can talk to i think this is a topic that needs to be exposed just as when we have a, 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 a um back pain leg pain whatever we can go to the internet to talk about all this information is there on the internet that you can read and educate yourself but no one wants to talk about it because it's an embarrassing disability is a hidden disability that's what erectile dysfunction is it's a sexual disability but it's something that's ruining relationships do not let it ruin your relationship you know, there are other ways I've, I've had when couples come to my session and they say to me, Henzi, you know, we've had a sexless relationship for a long time, no sex. I said, listen, I've been there. I understand that. But, you know, it's about coming to help the couples. OK, thinking about them, you know, what other ways can both of you agree to please yourself where the man feels satisfied, the woman feels satisfied and you can keep that relationship alive. You can keep it alive because I tell you what, if you begin to avoid, the man avoids, resentment will build up because you say, oh, well, um, because you can't function, then you will not touch your wife. You will not romance your wife. You will not do anything sexual with your wife. It's not about penetration always. You can have oral sex. You can even jointly masturbate yourself if you agree to, to it together you know, in your relationship. Well, you see, the consequences of erectile dysfunction in the marriage, a sexless marriage, it results into lack of intimacy, separation or divorce, infidelity, emotional and physical distance, change of focus and lack of closeness, poor communication and conflict. These are the things that can result, you know, when you don't address those things. Before you know, divorce. Before you know, the woman is saying, you know what, I can't do this anymore. You can't do your job. I'm going outside to look for a man who can please me. I'm going outside to look for a man who can satisfy me. Okay. Um, well, do you want that to happen in your relationship? If you don't want that to happen in your relationship, start to communicate. Start to think of other ways that you can help yourself. You know, start to introduce. You can use, there are lots of sex toys. I don't like sex toys, but there are a lot of sex toys that are there. If that's your thing, go ahead. Do your thing with your wife, you know. Okay, other ways to explore your spouse, which is what I've been talking about. Intercourse becomes erotic and pleasurable when there are multiple stimulations rather than when a man just focuses his mind on thrusting when he manages to penetrate with a weak erection. You know, so if you have a semi erection, I mean, for me, an erection is when something is standing upright. If you have a limp erection or, a, well, that's not an erection, is it? Because it's not standing upright. If you have like a, I, w I won't say, I don't know what to say, how, how to classify it. And, and if you have a penis that is not strong, it's not strengthened to form a full firm erection. Or you just manage to have a little strength in, in there. And you rush, you rush, you know, don't rush. Don't rush. Oh, yeah, because it just managed to come up a little bit. Let me just force it in. Because as you force it in, it will go limp inside the vagina. Though the woman is not going to feel it. I know because it's happened to me before. You know, your wife or your spouse is not going to feel that erection because it's gone limp and it's a weak erection. You know, even though you have a little bit of uh, erection and you can feel, oh, my, my penis is getting up a little bit. Feel your wife, feel your spouse, you know, use that opportunity. Forget about what's happening down there. 
use that up even if she says oh put it in put it in just tell her to wait also F use the opportunity to figure out how you can stimulate her in a different way okay be open to give and receive pleasure and erotic touching such as caressing kissing genital stimu um, stimulation and body exploration body exploration is is very important you know which is what i've been talking about so just because you cannot have um just because you don't have um um a full fir firm erection because of erectile dysfunction doesn't you don't have to disqualify yourself from sexual activity in your bedroom not to proceed into intercourse until there is a high level of subjective arousal and erotic flow which can help reduce performance anxiety you know your performance anxiety you're anxious oh gosh how am i gonna perform what's my expectation is she gonna expect me to be able to 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 please her to come or am i gonna come am i am i gonna come too quickly you get anxious calm down don't be anxious don't be anxious you're anxious because your focus is on what hasn't even happened why don't you allow yourself to go moment by moment this may be achieved with the aid of psychological treatment using CBT, which is cognitive behavioral therapy and a psychosexual therapist. If you're experiencing um, erectile dysfunction, my suggestion would be see a psychosexual therapist or see a, a CBT um, therapist who knows about sexual issues in terms of um, sexual um, psychotherapy, you know, or who works in, in that field so that they can help you personal experience also you don't need to have a big degree in psychosexual therapy or, or in sex to be able to say to somebody or or work with someone and say um okay you can this is what to do this is what to do with what to do you know well if you're a human being we're all knowledgeable if you're an adult you know and uh, and engage in sexual activity with consent you know um what you can advise somebody or suggest to somebody so my suggestion as a professional will be see a psychosexual therapist or see a b um a cognitive behavioral therapist that can help you who have knowledge in terms of um couples therapy that deals a little bit with um you know sex problems now going on that cbt why is cbt used to help overcome sexual problems now cbt is cognitive behavioral therapy so my question here why is it why do we use it to help people overcome sexual problems it can be of great benefit to couples or even individuals when the focus is on communication and emotional intimacy communication and emotional intimacy this is because it helps to reinforce the sexual desires of the man and the woman when looking at thoughts and behavioral patterns so it's about looking at your thoughts and behavioral patterns in the bedroom how you guys communicate with each other sexually so it can be very useful you know to, to um couples okay why do people feel it is difficult to talk about sex sexual problems you know well in my own experience i feel that this can be due to feeling shame guilt feeling judged insecure low self-esteem confidence issues or being in denial that's why it's difficult that's that that's why people don't want to talk about sexual problems you know they feel shame they feel guilty you know they feel insecure for example, when a man has lost confidence with erection, intercourse and orgasm for for sex becomes controlled by anticipatory and uh, performance anxiety, which makes it difficult to talk about sexual problems because your focus now is, okay, how am I going to perform? Your anticipation of what's going to happen, anxiety kicks in. He rather hides and deflects or is being in denial and shifting blame rather than exposing his problems to his spouse. You know, I've seen where people say, oh, well, we are too old. Let's not have sex. Come on. You're not too old for, for to have sex. Well, so what are you going to do for the rest of your life? So your penis stop working and then you give, you use that as an excuse and say, well, we are too old anyway. You know, some 80 year old people, they still have sex, you know. It doesn't mean that they, because they can't tell uh, you, maybe Viagra doesn't work for them. Some 
there are some people that Viagra doesn't work for, you know, but it doesn't mean that they don't find other ways to please their wives, you know. Um, so, you know, that's something to also think about. Another question I ask myself is, why does sex go wrong when it's such a natural, satisfying experience? If you are of age, sex is a natural satisfying experience but let's ask ourselves when we are in a relationship married to a relationship or a relationship if you are sexually active and you're experiencing erectile dysfunction in your marriage or in your relationship why does it go wrong sexual dysfunction either for a man or for a woman where there is conflict avoidance can threaten the stability of the relationship of course it does you know when you you're like listen we haven't had sex in how many days where because you can't and i'm not i'm not talking about those who are sexually active and they don't have any problem with their with their um um performance or erection if you have a full functioning penis this video is not for you this video is for those who have problems who have erectile dysfunction where the penis isn't working or if it's partially working who have um um, um premature ejaculation yeah those those sexual problems that's what this video is for well you can watch it if uh, you're a fully fu fu functioning man you can watch it but um you know just beware look after yourself i remember i used to um I used to text my, my younger brothers and I said to them, you guys need to check yourself, you know, because this is something that happened in men. Check yourself. Don't say, oh, I, you know, I'm functioning now. Check yourself, you know. Make sure you check yourself regularly. And if you notice that your penis is not, you know, one day is, is it, you have erection, the next day it's not full. Go and see your GP quickly, okay? And we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Now, sexual performance anxiety in men what are the symptoms what are the symptoms of sexual performance anxiety in men you have anxiety negative thoughts before or during sex feeling of not being capable to engage or conclude sex with their partner worrying or fear when they think about sex wow sexual performance anxiety you you'll be worried oh negative thoughts come into your mind am i going to be able to do this you know the fact that oh you're thinking oh i'm not going to be able to please my 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 partner i'm not able to go on, i'm not able to conclude sex you know and you're worried and you're thinking about it that's one of the symptoms okay inability to climax during sex as they are thinking if they would lose erection delayed or premature ejaculation decrease interest in sex it's one of the symptoms of performance and anxiety causes well there are so many different causes body image insecurities negative sexual experiences um, stress anxiety and other pressures to perform smoking we talked about that before Sexual abuse and sexual assault, sexual dysfunction, low testosterone, low sex drive, you know, oh, there's so many things that can lead to erectile dysfunction. Don't know what yours is, but figure out what yours is, what might be causing you to feel that. If it's old age that's causing you, you know, or is it your lifestyle that's causing you to have erectile dysfunction? Is it stress that's causing you to have erectile dysfunction? Don't ignore it. You know, do something about it. See your GP, you know, Exercise your pelvic muscles also. Exercise. Talk to your spouse about it. What is PE? When I when I found out, oh, PE. No, PE is not physical education. It's premature ejaculation. That's what that stands for. Which occurs in men when semen is expelled from the body during sex sooner than expecting. That can be very frustrating, you know. You just, you just lay there and it's not even up to a minute the man is come it, it, it's finished i'm like hmm? is that all is this it for us women it can be very frustrating it can be really really frustrating so and i think men need to understand that when you can't please your wife it's not about you running away and turning on the other side of the bed and feeling sorry for yourself it's about you asking your wife 
you know, I'm sorry that I, I, you know, wasn't able to, to fulfill your needs, you know, understand that she's hurt, understand her needs, you can address your needs later, but guess what, your wife or your spouse is there, and she's going through this with you, okay, okay, what is orgasm, orgasm, let me see how to pronounce this, what is orgasm, orgasm, Orgasmic, ah, oh, I got it right. What is orgasmic dysfunction? Okay, orgasmic dysfunction. This happens when a woman cannot reach orgasm or has trouble reaching orgasm during sex when she is sexually excited. This can become frustrating and make sex feel unenjoyable and a chore. You know, there's sometimes where some women want to, it's not only men that suffer from uh, sexual dysfunction. Uh, even though this topic is based on erectile dysfunction, women also suffer from sexual dysfunction. Some women suffer from, you know, sexual dysfunction where they, they can't have sex, they don't want to have sex because it's too painful or they've experienced some kind of sexual abuse. So, and because of that, you know, they avoid having sex, any sex and it can be very traumatic for them. But we're not talking about that now. We're talking about erectile dysfunction, that we can leave that for another day. I don't really see that in my sessions i think um i had that uh, female sexual dysfunction maybe years ago that case came into my um into my therapy room for my client but i do see people with um erectile dysfunction does a loss of desire happen why does it occur when a man has loss of confidence, when he has loss of confidence with erection due to his experiences of erectile dysfunction, which makes him feel embarrassed, frustrated, and eventually he avoids sexual touching and eroticism. It can also occur when the individual or couple no longer are sexually attracted to each other. When they're no longer sexually attracted to each other, I mean, they, you know, they. It could be for women. It could be maybe childbirth, health issues, you know, their body Im image issues. It could be infidelity in the relationship, emotional breakdown. I mean, if you don't feel um, emotionally or sexual chemistry with your spouse, you won't want to have sex with them. So it it could be either for the men or women, different things that happen. Okay, how can we correct the loss of desire and interest in sex? It's getting out of a boring routine, routine which is mechanical and feel like a chore. I really hate that, where sex becomes like a chore. You know, it becomes mechanical. Oh, let's just do it because, you know, let's just do it because we are doing it. No, sex is supposed to be like an art. It's like an, it's like an art, you know. When you love somebody, you explore somebody. It's like, um, it feels like, to me, it feels like, you know, those um, those artists, Michelangelo and all those people painting, you know, it's supposed to be like that. You know, they're exploring the canvas and painting. That's how sex is supposed to be. Not oh, because you want to do one bang and then you, you, you go, you know. It's not supposed to be like that. And we're not talking about those who are able to just do a quickie. If you have erectile dysfunction, there's nothing like quickie. You don't have quickies. Why? Because you can't even get the, the thing up. So there's nothing like quickie there. You know, so think about how you can bond with your partner sexually, emotionally, mentally, physically in a different way. Okay. Okay. How can social factors affect sex? When issues of sexuality or problem that affect our relationship are, are in dress, they become chronic and severe. Of course, if you're having problems and you're not addressing whatever is going on in your marriage, whatever is going on in your relationship, if you don't address it, then obviously it becomes a problem, doesn't it? Hmm? Of course it will become a problem. It will definitely become a problem. How can CBT help with sexual problems? yeah when um clients come into my session and they talk about um you know they talk about erectile dysfunction i try as much as possible to give them tasks i try as much as possible to speak to them and you know advise them um or suggest to them not advice suggest because when I, when you say advice it's like you're telling them what to do so when the reason i say suggest i can come up with suggest suggestions and it's up to them whether they feel it's suitable for them or not 
because I'll say, oh, how about this? Have you tried this? What about this? I wonder if this and this, have you thought about that? You know, so um, it's about me providing a confidential space um, for the couple to talk about this problem because I know it's not it's not something that's easy to talk about. So it's making the couple feel um it's making the couple feel um feel warm in the session, making them feel comfortable, approaching them in a non judgmental way and letting them know that I understand what you're going through if you're suffering from erectile dysfunction. I understand that what you're going through is something a lot of men go through. So there's no point hiding to say, well, you know, or looking down on them. So, oh, so you mean you are in a sexless marriage? No, there's nothing new about that. There are a lot of people go in there. I remember years ago, I went to um, the shop to buy something and the man, I met a man, you know, and he said to me, he, t he started to talk to me about his erectile dysfunction, about, he said to me, I don't want to lose my wife. I can't seem to get it up. You know, I said to him, okay, go see your GP. You know, this is a total stranger came up to me and he was talking to me about his erectile dysfunction as I was buying. And I've also met people in boots where they come up to me and they start to talk to me about, oh, you know, about Viagra, you know, this and this and this. I don't know why they approach me. It's not as if they know I'm a counsellor, but they approach me, they talk to me and I said, I just say, go to your GP. They'll give you any kind of medical advice, you know. Um... Also, what I do in my session is about collaborating with um, the couple or individual so that we can explore behavioral patterns, their thoughts, their feelings, and provide them with techniques that they can use in working together, techniques, coping mechanisms that they can choose, you know, to change and challenge on helpful thoughts and behaviors that they may have. You know, this because there's a lot of people that have gone through this and they don't want to say anything. But guess what? You, we're all hiding. We are all hiding and say, "Oh, I mean, I'm not gonna hide anymore." Because if my story can help you, if it can help you, I had to work on myself. I was very angry about this whole situation because I'm like, "Listen, you can't be in this marriage all these years and not having sex." You know. But then I began to to work on myself, okay, and educate him and say, "How." What is it? What else can we do? And let's think about other things that we can do. It's not about the penetration anymore. Then it became not about the penetration. It's about appreciating each other, emotionally connecting in, in each other, being able to touch each other in areas of our body that we can feel stimulated rather than feeling dead as if nothing has happened, you know, or nothing is happening. Um, so what is the first step? In addressing sexual problems the very first step to ad address sexual problem is to admit you have a problem admit you have a problem yeah don't hide and say oh no I, everything is okay and then look for who to blame admit you have a problem communicate with your partner seek medical and psychological help and advice there's nothing to be ashamed of seek medical professional advice don't sit there in your shame and say oh well, I'm, i can't speak to anybody i'm ashamed well before you know your wife will leave you and go and go see somebody else you know i didn't do that i'm a christian so i need to keep my marriage pure now for us as a uh, for me as a professional as a you know a therapist what i would normally do is um provide sex and um, psychosexual education for my clients also i'm able to normalize the situation when i when a man comes into my session and say oh Hensi, you know what i'm not being able to 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 sexually please my wife you know i normalize the situation for him to bring his anxiety down so then i know and i understand what you what you are going through you know why and that helps him to count that oh you know so it's not just me no it's not just you there are a lot of people who go through it just that they don't want to say that's why you don't know um i also reinforce the value of non-demand pleasuring and playful touch it's not all the time that you have to demand you must have sex with me today if you don't have an erection then that is over <sighs> He ain't going to have an erection. He ain't going to have an erection. So he's encouraging play. He's encouraging non-sexual contact, you know, that will help break down barriers. Okay. 
um, I'm gonna stop here so that I can do the part two. I want to thank you if you've been listening to this video for a few minutes now. I just have a little to cover but I'm gonna do a part two. Thank you for watching. Please don't go away. Stay tuned and listen to the part two where I'm gonna talk about um, relaxation technique. I'm gonna talk about mindfulness and I'm gonna talk about treatment that you need and then I will conclude. Okay, thank you so much.